Do you wonder how every pro wins games back to back when you can't win any? It's not some secret trick. Pro players actually do a combination of little things which results in more wins overall. Today, I'm going to share with you 10 of these tricks that when put together, create the secret sauce of zero build. In order to do well in zero build, you need to excel in the three pillars or principles of battle royale games. These three principles are game sense, mechanics and movement, and aim and loadout. For all of the tips, I'll be categorizing them into one of these three principles to help you understand how they'll affect your gameplay. The first thing you do every game is land. So while you're dropping in, turn visual audio on. It provides a massive competitive advantage and there's no reason that you should have it off. Now that you've done that, as you're landing, make sure you look around when you're gliding. Observe how many people are contesting you and how many people seem to be landing at nearby points of interest. Because this information will help you know when to take fights and when not to. I spotted about four players landing at Brawler's Battleground, only around one landing Olympus, and none landing with me. So using this information, I'm going to loot up and then rotate to Brawler's Battleground, where fights will probably still be happening, to clean the kills up and get the medallion for myself. Do your absolute best to land before other players, because the longer you're on the ground before them, the more likely you are to survive. Like in this clip here, I landed so far before this Christmas tree that he was just a free kill. Now that you've made it to the ground safely, what are you looking for? Well, a player's loadout is mainly preference, but here are some general rules you should stick to when building a zero build loadout. You should carry weapons in your first two slots. The first slot needs to be a shotgun. There are three shotguns this season, and each are powerful and can be used effectively, so it's your choice. Your other weapon should be a weapon that complements your shotgun, but also one that you're comfortable using. Some examples of possibilities here are the Warlord AR, Burst SMG, or even a Sniper. The third slot should be used for a complementary third weapon or utility items. Most players will carry something like a sniper here as a third weapon, but this slot, especially in higher ranks, is used for EMPs or bunkers, or in other words, utility. Once you start climbing the ranked ladder, the end zones start to have a large amount of players left, and without a utility item, you'll struggle to survive in many situations. The fourth slot is the movement slot. In zero build, you need mobility. It's used for survival, rotations when players are focusing you, and also outplay potential. This season, we have shockwaves and wings for movement, but the shockwaves are better by far. The wings are useful, but if you try to use them to push or run when against a competent player, you'll be lasered out of the sky because of the increased hitbox. And the final slot is the heal slot. The healing item is up to your preference, but I usually carry a Flowberry Fizz, because the anti-grav effect paired with the shockwave launch gives you way more distance and allows for some crazy outplays. For example, here are some loadouts I currently enjoy running, and I see being run a lot in high rank lobbies. These loadouts all have their uses, and of course, feel free to modify them as you wish. The first loadout is the Brawl loadout. With close range covered by the SMG and shotgun, and the power the sniper provides, this loadout sets you up for success and high kill games. The second loadout is the flashy utility loadout. With the versatility the AR provides, you can use it in place of an SMG with it also being effective at long range. And the EMP and the shockwave combo can get you some flashy kills and also disable a player's vehicle if they're trying to run from you. And the third loadout is the ranked bread and butter loadout. It's the same loadout as before, but running bunkers instead of EMPs will provide protection for you and your team in the final zones, making it much more likely that you'll survive the large amount of players left alive at the end of the game in ranked. As I said in the last tip, shockwaves are by far the best movement item this season. Shockwaves are versatile and useful in any situation. And to show you how powerful they can be, I did a comparison of the different ways to use them. When just using a shockwave normally, it'll take you approximately 60 meters. Obviously, 60 meters is a really long distance, but when you pair that with a Flowberry Fizz anti-gravity effect, a shockwave can take you a whopping 115 meters. Now after I deal with this guy so rudely interrupting my test, we can continue. Pairing a Flowberry Fizz with a Shockwave makes you go almost twice the distance, but when you throw in some slides to continue your movement, even though I bump my head on the tunnel here, I still go 
almost 50 meters farther than earlier. So when using shockwaves to push or run away from a player, always make sure to slide afterwards and continue your momentum. Be creative with your shockwaves. They don't need to only be used to push and run from players. Now as you can see in this clip, I utilize my Flowberry Fizz to make my shockwave take me farther to get the drop on my opponent. Unfortunately, I miss my snipe, but I notice here that he's crouched around the corner, and he's probably planning on pulling some trick. As predicted, he tried to hit me with a clinger, but I threw my shockwave into the room with him, hoping to launch him out of the building. And as you can see, it worked perfectly, and even though I had some shaky aim here, I was able to clean up the kill. Another creative way to use your shockwaves, and this is one of my personal favorites, is to shock directly up and rain EMPs from the sky and clean up the easy kill. Here's a clip from Doryu that demonstrates the EMP and shockwave combo perfectly. Buddy. Now that you've landed and kitted yourself out, if you're still alive, then congratulations, you're in the mid-game. This is a game sense tip, which is something that can't expressly be taught. So in the examples I provide here, just remember, there is no one correct way to play, and knowing what to do in any given situation usually comes from experience from just playing the game. That's the only real way to build your game sense. But with that said, into the tip. To survive the mid-game, you'll want to lay low and avoid fighting while trying to find a good position for the end of the game. Don't get me wrong, you can fight in the mid-game, but at this point, everyone wrapped up their early game fights, and any gunshots are like beacons that summon all nearby players to you. So if you fight mid-game, wrap it up quick, or run away so you don't get third party. Now, it's hard to tell what a good position for an endgame is without experience, but a general rule of thumb is to check which side of the circle is the closest to zone. This side is the quiet side of zone. It's usually better to rotate into the quiet side of the zone and find a place to loot or wait. This is because you'll be much less likely to encounter players, which will help you avoid unnecessary fights. Players outside of the zone have to rotate in to avoid dying, meaning that this active side of zone will have many more players than the quiet side and therefore be less safe. Also, towards the end of the game, when the moving zone activates, this concept is even more powerful because the quiet side of the zone is actually in storm before the zone shifts, meaning literally no one is there, so it's safe. If you've made it this far, you're much more likely to win, solely because you consistently can make it to the end game. And if you guys want me to go into more detail about the mid game or the end game in another video, let me know in the comments. Now that you have the basics down and you can survive until the end of every game, what's important now is optimizing your movement and actions. Arguably, the most important of these things is sprinting, and I'm going to teach you how to maximize your sprint and how to best use your sprint in fights. First off, in order to make the most of your sprint, you should, as a general rule, not include jumps. I tested sprinting, sprinting while sliding, sprinting with slides and jumps, and sprinting with only jumps, so I'll walk you through the results. As you can see, sprinting and sprinting with jump slides incorporated takes about the same time and goes about the same distance, while sprinting with only slides incorporated takes you almost double the distance in a little bit longer time. And as you can see here, sprint jumping with no slides takes away your stamina almost immediately and you travel not nearly as far as the regular sprints. Based on these results, my recommendation is to try to incorporate just slides into your sprint, because it takes you farther than plain sprinting and conserves your stamina. So if an enemy surprises you while you're sprinting, you may still have some stamina left to run and reposition. Also, when you run in a sprint, make sure that you aren't just walking normally. This makes it easy to hit you or snipe your head off, so try to prevent that from happening by incorporating jump slides while you wait for your stamina to recharge. Now you can also utilize these slide jumps to check behind you for enemies without messing up your momentum. As you can see in this clip, I sprint jump, turn around, and then continually slide jump to maintain my momentum so that I can look behind myself without backpedaling. This tip goes over crouching and best practices like gun swapping and utilizing cover. 
Crouching has two main uses, for stealth and also to throw off your opponent. As you can see in this clip, I noticed a lot of players around me, so I crouched in a safe location to be stealthy. And wouldn't you know it, I got the drop on this unsuspecting player. As I hit the reload, I hear him start fighting someone. I notice that he's alive, which means he has to be one tap, and I get a free medallion. Also, when you're in a gunfight, specifically with fast firing weapons like ARs, throwing in random crouches during the fight means the opponent might miss some bullets, which might win you the fight. In the loadout tip, I mentioned that you should always have at least two weapons, and this is for one main reason, so that you can follow up on your shotgun with your other weapon. When using shotguns like the gatekeeper or the pump, the fire rate is super slow. And it's slow enough that it leaves a lot of time between your gunshots, where if you aren't shooting your opponent, they could be damaging you. So, when you run these shotguns, the most efficient thing to do is open with a shot from the shotgun, immediately swap to your weapon, shoot a few shots, and then swap back to the shotgun and repeat. This is otherwise known as gun swapping, and it can make sure that you're constantly outputting damage. And if you weren't already doing this, and you incorporate it into your gameplay, you'll be surprised how many more fights you'll win. Now this final part of the tip is incredibly important and often overlooked by a large majority of players. You need to be effectively using cover. Do your best to not take fights or start fights when you're standing in the open and make sure that you have something like a tree, a rock, or a wall to hide behind. Now, as you all know, Fortnite is third person and the camera is positioned over the right shoulder. So take advantage of the right hand peek concept that the camera provides and make sure to peek out from the right side of cover because it will give you an advantage when fighting enemies. Now this clip here is a perfect example of using cover and the right hand peek mechanic to win a fight. I got caught off guard by an enemy while I was reading my Korra quests and I immediately ran and EMP'd him to get the early damage advantage. Then I used right hand peek and this cliff ledge here to take poke shots at him to secure the kill without him even damaging me. And this is what that looked like from his perspective. As you can see here, my right hand peeks barely gave him time to shoot me, easily winning me the fight. Now, I know no one likes to hear this, but your aim is a very important part of your success especially in zero build, where fights may take place at long distances or without cover. In order to improve your aim, you can use aim trainers like Kovacs or aim lamps, or be like me and never touch an aim trainer because that's boring. The best way to improve your aim in a specific game, in my opinion, is to just play that game. So the more experience you get playing zero build, the better your aim will become naturally. Another thing to check is if when you try to track someone, Moving horizontally across your screen, does the crosshair drag behind them or speed past them? If it does either of these things, that's an indicator that you might need to change your sensitivity. Personally, there was a really long time where I felt like I was just losing fights because my tracking was bad and I didn't know what was going on. I watched back footage of a fight I took and I realized that my crosshair was dragging behind the opponent. So I slightly upped my sensitivity and like literal magic, my aim improved. Now, as you know, every season of Fortnite comes with a ton of brand new items, movement, weapons, and mechanics. So familiarizing yourself with the changes of the season as fast as possible will help you succeed. Make sure you know how each weapon works and what it feels like to shoot, what its role is, and how it complements other weapons in your loadout. And do the same thing for items. For example, last season was the first time I had seen the shield breakers. I didn't know they disabled vehicles until almost halfway into the season. That's super useful information that could have helped me if I had known earlier. Another example is this season, one of the first things I did was test if the Zeus Medallion, Underworld Dash Charges, and the Wings prevented fall damage. This may seem trivial, but knowledge like this has saved my life in countless matches. And a few bonus tidbits here, the Shield Breakers can actually disable the Shield Bubble Jr and the Zeus Medallion, when sprint jumping, actually can fully jump over a bunker. Now, these final two tips are short and sweet, but they can be surprisingly helpful. I am a chronic reloader, meaning that I reload constantly when I don't need to, and a lot of the time it gets me killed. 
For example, if I shoot two shots of my auto shotgun at an enemy, we both take cover and I immediately start reloading and they decide to push me. I'll be stuck in my reload animation when I still had six shots I could have used, which is more than enough to have killed that enemy. So make sure you're only reloading when you have to or when you have the time to. Also, after fights and before fights, just cycle through all of your weapons and make sure they're reloaded. Because I don't know about you, but when you try to jump someone and you whip out your shotgun and it has no ammo in it and you get killed instead, it's very frustrating. Give me your money. <laughs> now the final tip is how to get out of a car. I know it sounds silly, but in all seriousness, this little tip has saved my life so many times. When you get out of a vehicle, your character pops out on the side of the seat they were sitting in. So, if I drive up to an enemy and they're on my left, before I get out, I quickly change seats to the other side of the car and get out, so that I have a car between my opponent and me. It seems a bit dumb, but car fights can be super annoying or even get you killed from one small mistake like getting out on the wrong side of the car. Like and subscribe, please, please, I'm begging you, please! I also stream on Twitch, guys, you should check that out.